So good morning, students. So today we are going to discuss about another Python. So write it down. Python as elements. As elements, or we'll also call it as nematodes. Nematodes. Or we can also call it as Nimat elements. All names are saying Nimat elements. Or we can also call it as commonly round worms. All names are saying round worms. Round worms. We'll also call it as nematode helminths, algae helminths, or nematodes. All names are same. So here, when I split this one, as cos, as cos means uh, rounded in appearance, round in appearance. Helmin means worm. We have already studied in platy helminths, na? Platys means uh, flat. Helmin means worm. Like I told you here also, you can split uh, as cos means uh, round. So, helminths means worms. So, nematodes or nemathy means. Nemathy means. So, here you can split here also. Nemathy, then helminths. Nemathy means a thread like. This will be, look like a thread. And helminth means worms. Here, as cos means. As cos means round, helminths means worms. Helminths means worms. So all names are same only. So for this single word, I will give nemate helminths, nematode, or as a helminths. So when we come across some characteristic feature, always we will start with this habitat. We have already taken that first characteristic feature as habitat, where they will live. So, round worms. Round worms are mostly round worms are mostly parasites. So these are also parasites in plants and animals both. In plants and animals. In plants and animals. So in plants they may cause agricultural damage. They may cause agricultural damage. In animals means it may cause veterinary damage and it may cause a damage in the human beings also. It may cause damage to the agricultural crops, it may cause damage to the veterinary or any other vertebrate animals. So by living within the host body, it may cause that any disease of a particular host body, so including human beings also. If man get this uh, any any type of parasite or around worm. For example, you already know about this Ascaris lumbricoids, commonly called uh, round worms, intestinal round worms. So why we are calling it as intestinal round worms? So why? Because they may lead their life in our body itself. So that will be our body will be act as a host body. So they may get the nutrition as we already studied in the platelet element. So like I told you, so these are the different parasites you will find either in the plants or some you will find in animals. And uh, some are free living. Some are free living. So free living in the sense of either terrestrial. Terrestrial in the sense in bracket usually you will find these different around worms in a soil. Are you getting my point? In soil you will get and also you will find the aquatic medium. You will also find in aquatic medium. 
they will also find in aquatic medium aquatic in the sense uh, either in fresh water or in marine water so you will find uh, the different types of uh, roundworms so this is first characteristic feature you have to remember that uh, mostly parasites mostly in the sense uh, in 100 percent uh, so 90 or 90 and above percentage of these animals you will find in the different uh, uh, organisms body for example you will find in plant body also you will find in what other vertebrate animals also you will find in human beings also so this is first characteristic feature you should remember so along with that round worms are unsegmented are you getting my point unsegmented so segmentation we will not find so from which phylum segmentation may start Annelidans, so very good. So that's what annelidans will commonly called uh, segmented animals. Is it or not? So this is what you have to remember. So after completion of this, uh, another base of classification, a grade of organization. So next, you just note it down. Uh, grade of organization. You have already studied so many times. You can easily understand what is this grade of organization. So then followed by what type of organization you will find here? So organ system level. For the first time in the animal kingdom, organ system level starting with this phylum. Organ level in platic helminths, organ system level you will find it as key helminths to up to cordex, including human beings. So we will also exhibit uh, this organ system level of organization. So as you already studied that. Organ system level in the sense uh, a group of organs may form one organ system. So if I have already studied about that uh, urinogenital system is there, I have already told you a pair of kidney. So if, when you will consider, so those two kidneys will become only organs. It will not form one complete organ system. So when it will form organ system, so when it is joining with this uh, ureter pipe along with that urinary bladder and urethra that together will call it as an urinogenital system in a male organism is it or not so that excretion process to be done within that uh, kidneys and that uh, carried or conveyed to the urinary bladder through the ureter pipe and uh, that is to be stored, uh, stored temporarily in the urinary bladder which is get excreted out through an opening called uh, urethra so this is how this is how the urinogenital system is there. I am, asked, I am dealing with this only urinogenital system. So in future when you come across this human physiology, na, you are going to study with that only human excretory system. Like that many systems to be there in the human beings and other animals. So like circulatory system is there, right? The reproductive system is there like that. So one system is nothing but so group of organs will be there. So that's what, so starting from this ASCII elements, you are finding the group of organs that is nothing but forming the organ system level. So then followed by another characteristic feature. So this is also a very important character, symmetry. You just note it down, another base of classification character, symmetry. Usually, we already know that exhibiting bilateral symmetry. Starting from Latin elements to up to human beings exhibiting bilateral symmetry. So one simple word, I'll tell you, you can easily remember about uh, symmetry in any organism. So I have already told you that uh, one plane, two plane, no plane, any plane. One plane, bilateral, two plane, biradial, any plane, radial, no plane, asymmetric. That's it. In one word, you can easily remember all four different types of symmetry. So starting from here, so sorry, starting from platic helminths, you will find a bilateral symmetry. So another base of classification. What is that? Coelomic condition. You should remember that coelom or body cavity or body cavity. So you will find a special type of coelom here. So that type of coelom we call as Pseudo You should remember this is very important. Pseudo silo. Pseudo in the sense of false silo you will find. So as we already studied that uh, in basis of classification while studying so different silos. Types of silos you have already studied. So when you take uh, a small, a small diagram that shows that how the splitting of mesoderm will be there between the ecto and the endoderm. So you can consider pseudo -silo. 
you will find usually three germ layers na so outer ectoderm and uh, middle mesoderm you will find so this is what so outer ectoderm and right so this is outer ectodermal layer so you have taken means no problem you just remember that uh, so how this splitting out mesoderm will be there and how this is uh, to be forming and how it will be acting as a hydroskeleton so this you have to remember this will consider as ectodermal layer and uh, at the end in the inner layer we will call it as endoderm endoderm is also lined by specialized cells this is forming another germ layer during embryonic development in between you are finding scattered pouches splitted mesoderm so this is splitted mesoderm is in the form of scattered pouches so that is what uh, we call as a pseudo silo or such type of animals we call as a pseudo silo mix this is what pseudo silo This is what ectoda. Ectoda. Then this is mesoda. Then followed by this is endoda layer. Central eomedical point. So this is how the splitting of mesoda. So pseudo silomate. One more important thing about this pseudo silomate is remember. So pseudo silo maintains. in plantae helminth also parenchyma will form a network structure so that the network of this parenchyma will maintain the body shell that's what we call as a hydroskeleton there like it's only here also pseudo silo maintains pseudo silo maintains a body shell pseudo silo maintains body shell means so this will also act as a hydroskeleton Just remember that also act as a hydroskeleton. Also act as hydroskeleton. 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 so next characteristic feature symmetry silo grades of organization then followed by body plan you just remember one line information about this uh, body plan what type of body plan it will find body plan is of tube within tube body plan why because of why because of when the mechanism digest the system you will study that complete digestive system starting from this phylum only so complete digestive tract in the sense i have already told you so many times so mouth and anus together form means it forms a complete digestive system when this is to be complete so when this is exhibiting tube within tube plan tube within a tube body plan when these animals exhibiting tube within tube plan it means that the two openings to be forming one for ingestion and other opening for digestion of food so this is very important body plan also so after completion of this body plan we will move towards another very important characteristic feature of course here also respiratory system is absent respiratory then one more which is that circulatory and if true skeleton is not there how we have this endoskeletal structure now like that endoskeleton is not there that's for the skeletal structure system is absent or active to develop 
or it not to develop it not to develop in the sense uh, those systems are absent from it so here also respiration or exchange of gases takes place through body surface are you getting my point so through body surface so after that a very important another classification character is about the digestive system or physiology character consider digestive system digestive system is complex and write it as a ds digestive system is complex digestive system is complex it means that digestive system is complex when when well developed muscular pharynx underline this word muscular pharynx there are so many times in whole animal kingdom for the first time uh, development of muscular pharynx was finding in these as a helix so pharynx what is that the common function of pharynx pharynx may include after ingestion process passing of the food into the next part of the elementary canal so that is how we have this pharynx now but in us pharynx will be well developed than these organisms so pharynx is a short tube in the human being so that a short tube will be helpful for passage of the food so after buccal cavity reaching to the buccal cavity mastication and all takes place now after mastication that food may enter into the pharynx then into the esophagus then followed by it may enter into the next part called the stomach so how it is to be there in the human beings now so like it only these animals also well developed muscular pharynx is there is it or not so that the muscular pharynx here also that may Uh, convey the food material from upper part of the elementary canal one part to the next part of the elementary canal it may helps in conveying the food are you getting my point so this is what well developed muscular pharynx is a another characteristic pet so next followed by so just noting down next another important characteristic pet of excretory system excretory system excretory system usually consists of consists of underline this word head shaped excretory canal or canal pure head shaped excretory canal This may consisting head-shaped excretory canal in the sense of how we write this head in the same way you will find this excretory canal for the removal of excretory waste along with the maintenance of the bottom and sort of as is called as what osmoregulate. So for that purpose. so how this flag comes may have this plate cells of solanum sites na like in the only so here you are finding this uh, excretory system constituting this head shaped excretory canals are there along with that the excretory canals those excretory canals are uh, lined by specialized cells so those cells are called as uh, renate cells you just underline that word renate cells these are very complex type of cells you will find in the excretory system of round worms in round worms excretory system that the canals will be looks like a head shape and those head shape canals will be having a specialized a complicated cells we call as a renate cells or in other words we will also call it as a j cells g i a n t j n cells so g n cells are all means so these involved in a removal of excretory waste what type of excretory waste these animals excrete out of ammonia here also ammonia is a major one ammonia is a main excretory waste 
main expiratory vessel. Main expiratory vessel. It is a subtle language word ammonia. So ascaris, like round worms may also excrete out the urea. So but the urea will be not what that much content, so that's what most of these animals or organisms may excrete out the ammonia. So that's what you just consider ammonia is the main excretory waste. So next followed by another very important characteristic feature. So, outer excretory system will move to nervous system. So, little complex nervous system you will find when you compare with this platea helmet. So, here you will find a, a circumferential ring. Circumferential ring and and associated nerves. Associated nerves in both forward and backward. Are you getting my point? How forward and backward? For example, you consider in the human being brain is there. So brain is a sense in this animal we consider as a circumferential ring. So I have already drawn one small diagram now, sir, how this anterior nerve ganglia will get formed in the platy helminths. So these are two major ganglia which are connected by the different transverse nerves together. So whatever happens in the body, so for example here in the lower parts of the body, so a sensation will be going on. So this is to be responding to the external stimulus means uh, so what type of nerves are there in this region they will collect the information so through that uh, a longitudinal nerve cord that information mainly that reaches to the where brain so brain in the sense there what the anterior nerve ganglia is it or not like it only here also this nervous system constituting nerve cords to be there so these nerve cords may collect the associated nerves to be there nerve cells are there so whatever happens in the body so it will collect from different parts of the body this external stimulus and later that information may reach us to the main ganglia circumferential ganglia that is circumferential ganglia can also be considered as brain whatever this uh, coordination is there and uh, uh, how this organism will immediately respond to the external stimulus means uh, by presence of this main circumferential ganglia and associated uh, nerves will be there. So those nerves, associated nerves will collect the information from different parts of the body and reach into the circumferential rings in both the direction, in both in the sense of front also different nerve network is there and the back side also. Is it or not? So both sides we want, now then only we can easily respond to the external stimulus. So that's what, this is very important, presence of circumferential rings and associated nerves in both the forward and backward. So both sides are spreading, uh, nerve network will be there. So those nerve networks will collect the information. Along with that, some sensory organs also will find. Sensory organs. Some sensor structures you will find here. So those sense structures we call as a first one. So different sensory organs you will find. In us also different sensory organs are there. Now punch areas are there. So like that in these animals you will not find punch area. So instead of that we will find a tapi leg. Tapi leg. Tapi leg. Offer on lips. Offer on lips. Offer on lips. So, what is this mean important for by presence of papillae on lip region? So, this role also very important. Uh, tactile in function. You already know that the tactile means. Tactile means sense to touch. 
You just write it down in brackets. So these are touch receptors. Touch, sense to touch, tactile. Another type of receptors we call as a gustatory. Have you heard that word gustatory? Gustatory in the sense, sense to taste. Like that only chemo receptors are there, sense to chemicals. Is it or not? So like that you just remember. And another second one, very important sense organ. Amphix. A-M-P-H-I-D-S. Amphix. These are present in the form of small pigs. Not pig, pig, pig. Pigs. These are present in the form of pigs. So these are also present in the anterior most part of the body or around the lips you will find, but function will be different. You just write it down in one line function, these will act as a chemoreceptors. They will be acting as a chemoreceptor. These are sense to chemicals. Sense to chemicals. And the third one more very important sensory organ recorded as the plasmix. Amphix, papillae, and the plasmix. So plasmix, you will find in some roundworms, in other, some other roundworms you will not get these type of sensory structures. But this amphix and papillae in almost all the roundworms you will find. Are you getting my point? So this plasmix are glandulosensory in function. Glandulosensory in function. G L A N D U L O S E N S O R Y. Glandulosensory function. Glandulosensory, the name itself says that glandulomics it will also act as a glands. What are the important roles of the glands in our body? Means what is that? So secretion of different chemical substances. These may act as a messengers. Is it or not? If we are directly, uh, immediately we are responding to the external chemical, external stimulus means uh, so one will be neural system is controlling along with that chemical control is also with that. Chemical control in the sense, uh, for example, releasing of some important uh, neurotransmitter. Have you heard that word neurotransmitters? No. So those chemicals to be secreting in between the nerve endings. At least uh, you know this nerve ending now. So for example, you can take that uh, uh, one the neuron. So at the end of the neuron, you are, you are finding button-like structures now. Telodendrites you are finding. Have you heard of telodendrite? So in that uh, telodendrite, that uh, button-shaped structure now, that uh, button-shaped structure itself constituting chemicals uh, like uh, estalcholine will be there or in brain you will also find uh, dopamine will be there or uh, GABA will be there. All these are the different chemicals to be there. So if these chemicals are not secreting means uh, so that information process the information from brain uh, it may not reach us to the effect or organ is it or not so that's what that one neuron to other neuron one neuron to another neuron so that the series of billions together neurons to be there one billion neurons are there in our body so how this coordination function is there means uh, by secretion of these chemicals only so some chemicals we may call it as neurotransmitter and some other chemicals we may call as uh, hormones so before reaching that to the target organ, so there is a release of this hormone. Then only immediately will respond to the external stimulus. So how these glands will be secreting different chemicals? Na? In same way, plasmids will also have this uh, gland secretion. So it may also act as a glands. It means that uh, it may secrete a different secretory substances, those glands. Along with that, this will also act as a chemoreceptor. Why? Because of uh, in suffix they are written as a sensory. What type of sensation means chemoreception? It means that uh, it may uh, very very active to so receiving or uh, stimulus external stimulus to the different uh, chemicals. So that's what uh, so this is both. Uh,
glandular and sensory function. So it can also act as a gland or just chemo receptor. So you just remember this word. Plasmids. Plasmids are very important. So after that, we'll move towards another very important characteristic feature. We'll just note it down. After this nervous system, so directly we will start with this uh, reproduction. So in these organisms, up to platy elements, so you have already taken either hermaphroditic condition or we will also call it as monoecious condition or bisexual. But starting from this ASCII element, especially in ASCII element, you are finding dioecious condition. Spelling, you just remember D I O E C U P O or say I O U S. Or you can write it by the C E O U S, dioecious. Huh? I O U. So you write it down. D I O E C I O U S. Dioecious. Dioecious in the sense what? Sexes are separate. Sexes are separate. Just remember this word. Sexes are separate. Sexes are separate in the sense in some animals. So these may exhibit sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism means we can easily differentiate whether it is a male or female. Differentiation of male and female. You just write it down in brackets. Differentiate male and female. Whether it is a male organism or female. In human being also, sexual dimorphism is there or not? Is that so? We can easily call it as a, a he or she. Why? Because of based on some morphological characteristic feature. When it comes to second year, we are going to study about this human reproduction, secondary sexual characters in male, secondary sexual characters in female. Is it or not? Secondary sexual characters in the sense of morphological appearance. In male organism, muscle development is there, mouse patches will be there. Is it or not? So, all by these now, we can easily identify whether it is a male or female. Like it's only in females also will find. But in these organisms, so all will be looking like the same. How do we differentiate them? Whether it is a male ascaris or whether it is a female ascaris. I think you have already heard about this ascaris, male, female, in practical also you have observed, I think, practically. No. So, how we will differentiate very easily whether it is a male or female ascaris means, I will just draw one diagram, you can easily understand. This is very simple. Differentiation is very important. In practical also you are going to study Morphologically, you have to differentiate. So, first animal, I'll draw like this. This is one. This is anterior end, this is posterior end. Are you getting a point? And another one. This is anterior, this is posterior. You consider this as male and this as female. Female. So two differences are there. You write it down. Females are longer than males. One difference. Females are longer than males. You just make this one little longer than this male. You can easily differentiate orthologically. This is true actually. So, second difference, sexual dimorphic characteristics. Males have curved 
in curved end you can take curved end in a posterior ray this is curved end curved end but in males you are finding straight posterior end will be straight in females so this is female we will be having straight posterior end but in the male posterior end will be curved one by these two differences we will call it as these animals exhibiting sexual dimorphism are getting my point now sexual dimorphism means what right so next characteristic feature So in reproduction, you just write it down. Fertilization is internal. Fertilization is internal. And development may till party helmets we study the usually indirect development. For example, if we consider porifera. So in porifera, you will find a ampiblastular parenchymal larva that is indirect development only. In cilantrata, planular larva that is also indirect development only. So like uh, in tenophora, CDP larva that is also indirect development only. Like in planting helminths, meratherium, sporosis, sarcaria, metasarcaria, uh, hexacanth, arcosphere, sister circus. All these are the circus like uh, so many larval stages are there in the platform. So like it's only when you consider this as the helminth. So here also development may direct or indirect. Are you getting my point? So most of them uh, will be exhibiting indirect development. You just consider direct or indirect development. Indirect development. So direct development in the sense uh, any ones are resembling directly the others. So that is a direct development. So, but here in the indirect development by exhibiting different larval forms. So, one important larval form you just remember. Microfilaria larva. Microfilaria larva you will find in. We will find in animals like Ucheriria. Just remember W U C H E R E R I A. Ucheriria. Ucheriria commonly called a filarial worm. Are you getting my point? Commonly called a filarial worm. In filarial worm, we will find a microfilaria larva. Right? So, another very important larva. Rapidiform larva, R H A D D I D I D F O R M. Rapidiform larva. So rapidiform larva usually will find in ascaris or intestinal roundworms. And also one more larval form we will find another very important larva. Sorry, just consider microfilaria instead of that. Sorry for the inconvenience. You just note it down. Encylostoma. Encylostoma. Encylostoma will commonly called a cuckoo. Commonly called cuckoo. But a filariform larva, when you consider in a Uche area. Same. So instead of writing around that. 
Uchir area. This is very important larva. Uchir area commonly called as filaria or filarial worm. This is any style of stomachoqua and that is a rapidity form as caris columbri points, commonly called a round worm. Intestinal round worm. Or we'll also call it as joint intestinal round worm. That is not necessary, only a round worm you consider. Right? That's enough. These are three different larval forms, you just remember. So, for completion of these developments, so directly we will move to classification. So usually, classification is not there here. So, instead of this classification, usually classification that is based on, depends on presence or absence of a sensory organs. If you want means you just take down this uh, date based on the sensory organs presence absence. We will divide this into two main important classes. Here example so are very important than this classification. Usually as the helmets classification they are not mentioned. So you just note it down. Classification in that based on sensory organs. We are dividing into two classes. So first class, you just put it down. First class. Class number one. A fast media. Are you getting my point? You can easily. A means absence. Absence of fast means. A fast media. A fast media, one best example. Trichinella species. So commonly also call it as trichinella species. Trichinella. And second one, fast media. Here fast meets you will find. Fast meets. They have which function for what is the function of the plasmid? Glandulosensory function. You have taken down one letter. So, these plasmids are present in these animals belonging to this plasmid. One best example you just wrote it down W U C H E R E R R R I A J area Bancrofty. Javeria bankrupty. So Javeria bankrupty commonly called what? Filarial form. Just write it down common name. Filaria or filarial form. So it may cause a disease called an elephantiasis. Have you heard this word elephantiasis? Huh? Uh, swelling of this uh, leg or around a uh, male genital structure called as scrotum. Scrotum or this uh, swelling may also takes place in arms. Right? So you just put it down swelling in arm, not necessary. For your kind of information, you just remember arm, scrotum, and uh, legs. So why this swelling may take place, that is majorly caused due to when it enters into a blood circulatory system, so lymphatic system have heard of? Lymph, uh, lymphatic system. That the lymphatic system, button shape structures you will find all over the body called the lymph nodes are there. Within that lymph nodes you will find the specialized WBC cells called the lymphocytes are there. Whatever virus or bacteria may enter into our body means uh, through that uh, lymph, na, it may pick up from the blood and it may get uh, reached into the lymphatic system or in lymph node. So when they will completely block that lymphatic system means immediately blocking means what will happen then? Immediately collection takes place that will lead to swelling. Are you getting my point? This is how the elephantiosis or we will also call it as a filariasis. A disease foundation will also call it as a filariasis. Elephantiasis or filariasis caused by Uchiriria bankrupt or commonly called filarial work belonging to 
pass media. Second one of the best example is that ensilostoma. We have already taken now only na ensilostoma. Ensilostoma complete scientific name means duodenal. Ensilostoma duodenal. So if you just remember ensilostoma, commonly called a hookworm. Commonly called hookworm. This is also belonging to the same class. And the third example. Loya loya. So this will also cause that this is called a ensilostomiasis. Are you getting my point? Ensilostomiasis. N silo stomiasis. And uh, one more example, loya loya. So loya loya are commonly called eye worm. It may cause a damage to our eye. Especially it may cause a swelling around the, our eyeball. Swelling around the eyeball or in advanced state, it may also cause a conjunctivitis. Have heard that word conjunctiva? This is the transparent covering layer of this eyeball. So, front region, the cornea will be there. Na? Cornea. So, front one more layer is there. Transparent layer we call it as conjunctiva. It may cause an infection of that conjunctiva. That may cause a disease called a conjunctivitis. Regarding my point. So, that conjunctivitis or uh, it may also cause a disease called a loiasis. Loiasis. And uh, one more best example for these class animals Ascaris. Ascaris lumbricoids. Commonly called uh, genit intestinal roundworm or in general you just uh, note it down as roundworm. This is intestinal parasite in the human being. Especially, mostly we will find in the children's. So usually, children's, they may always uh, with the soil only. Na? So when they sometimes uh, they may eat the soil also. Is it or not? So when they will eat this soil, na? along with that soil, that uh, eggs may come, small round of eggs may come, that may hatch in our intestine. So, in our host body, we will act as a host body. So, in our host body, in intestine, so hatching of the egg takes place and that the larva may get developed. Na? So, that's what yeah, those larva may also come along with the stool. Along with the stool. So, that is a disease condition of the small intestine called ascariasis. May also cause, this is very common among these children. Ascariasis and in adults as well as especially in children also after the age of this 13 14 you will find a uchi area bankrupt that's for the every year they will give the tablets now so related with this elephantiasis so we just remember only scientific name as well as this common name so by this uh, i'll conclude this uh, phylum asci helmin so uh, in the next class uh, we'll discuss about another very important phylum phylum anelida Right? Thank you.